Praise the living God. I thank you. I pray y'all are doing well today. I just want to come on and give y'all some scriptures uh, the Lord had put on my heart to give give to y'all and discuss. Hallelujah. Um, this could be a part two, if you like, if you want to consider it that. Uh, but it kind of a piggyback of what um, uh, last teaching I was I did uh, concerning uh, can a born-again believer uh, have a demon, um, which, you know, we're going to dig in the Word today. And uh, I'm going to give you scripture support. The reason why I do not believe that a born again believer can be possessed by a demon. I know there are many people that teaches that it, it can. But how can light and darkness dwell in the same um, same temple? Our body temple, the Holy Ghost. The Bible, Jesus said, how to divide against itself shall not stand. The Bible does not support that a born again believer can be can be demon possessed. I know many people they they they, they talk about uh, when Jesus cast out demons um, numerous of times in the Bible. But my answer to that is those people were not born again. Jesus had not died yet. He had not died. He had not blood. He had not had shed his blood yet. His spirit didn't went out inside those people that had the demons in them. So you can't use that. And you can't use the Old Testament, a person in the Old Testament, to say that person um, was demon, uh, demon possessed and was born again. The spirit was on them, not in them. So we got to make sure what we believe line with the Holy Scripture, line with the God, what God's word said. Very vital. That's why Paul told Timothy, study this so that I'm self approved unto God. A workman need not to be ashamed. Right, divine word of truth. I'm very, um, I'm open for some, if someone, if they got scriptures or the supports that a born again believer can be deemed possessed. But I'm going to give you scriptures today that supports that they cannot be deemed possessed. That a born again believer can, cannot be deemed possessed. But a person that's not saved, a person that's not born again, yes, they can be deemed possessed. They're walking in darkness. Uh, they got evil, demonic spirits living in the inside of them. But a born again believer, once he uh, repent, he deliver, repent and believe the gospel, and at least Act two thirty eight, there's no demon living inside of them anymore. After that, They're not living in them anymore. You see what the script, and also before I get get to that. Um, we got to know what the gospel is. We know that it's a death, burial, and resurrection. But what do you find in the scripture? What did the scripture say the gospel is? The Bible said, repent and believe the gospel. But what is the gospel? I meet so many people that say they are born again. They say they know the Lord Jesus Christ is, and they cannot, hallelujah, tell you what the gospel is. They don't know what to find in the scripture. They don't know what the Bible says the gospel is. We got to make sure that what we believe lies with what God's word said. And there are many, hallelujah, people that say they are born again believer and they don't know what the church is. They think the church is a building. The church is a, a called out group. The Bible, the Bible, hallelujah. We got, they are the echo said, a called out group. And we got to make sure we know what what the gospel is. Very vital. Very vital. Many people, they're like children. Talk to and forward with every wind and doctrine. While starting and crafting of men. Why they wait by to deceive them. Why? Because they don't they don't know the scripture. They don't know what the word said. If you're supporting something or you're uh, believing in something. Know why you believe that. Have scriptures to, to back up why you believe that. And make sure that you get got it from the Holy Ghost, from the Holy Spirit. Because there are a lot of evil spirits out there, people. A lot of people that are teaching many different things. You got spirit of truth and the spirit of error. We got to make sure we know why we believe what we believe. And stand on that. Don't be so easily moved. 
I vow to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing to labor is not in vain in the Lord. So what is the gospel? Those that are listening, what is the gospel? What do you find of that? What did the Bible say the gospel is? That's what's important. Man can come up with all kinds of vices, come up with all kinds of uh, opinion, what they say it is or what they say it's not. Well, let's dig into this word and read and study and see what the Bible says the gospel is today. And I'm going to give you scripture that supports uh, why a born-again believer cannot have a demon in him or her and, be, uh, and have the Spirit of God. It's impossible. The Spirit of God comes on the inside of you and it cleanses you. It washes you. It purifies you. You clean that house out. And we're going to see what the scripture, hallelujah, says about that. Let's go into a word of prayer before we dig into this word. Gracious God, we thank you today. We thank you, God, for your word today, God. I pray, God, your word, God, fall on good ground today. You're so good to us. Your word, let me talk, feel like into our pathway, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to allow your word, God, to be illuminated to us, God. Just as Jesus said, your word is spirit and life. I thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You know, and I've heard other people, you know, they say, well, uh, they want to bring up Old Testament uh, people to refer to a New Testament believer. And you can't use those, can't use that either in that particular subject. Because the Spirit was on them. The Spirit wasn't in them. But a New Testament believer, those that, hallelujah, have repented and believed the gospel, glory to Jesus Christ, they have the Spirit of God now on the inside of them. It's not on them, it's in the inside of them. That's why Jesus told his disciples to tarry into Jerusalem to be endowed with the power from on high. And he was referring to the Holy Ghost. He was referring to them going into the upper room until they were endowed with that power from on high. That's why it says in Acts 1 and 8, he said, receive power, hallelujah, after, after you receive the Holy Ghost, you be, they receive power, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Great, he that within you, and he within this world. Not on you, but in you. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. They're referring to the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Uh, yes, you can be influenced, but that don't mean that you're possessed. That don't mean that you're possessed, born again believer. That don't mean that you're possessed because you're influenced. That don't mean, hallelujah, that you're possessed. And because you have um, thoughts that's, that, that's, that's, that's not right, it doesn't align with the scripture, that don't mean that you're possessed. Because when you're, when you're born again, your spirit is what's saved. It's what's saved. Not your mind. Not your body. Like people may think it is. It's not. That's why the Bible says, let that mind that was in Christ be also in you. The mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And it says, be not, Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What renews your mind? The word of God does. So just because your mind, you have wicked thought, it's in your mind, that don't mean that you're possessed. You got to cast those thoughts down. Hallelujah. The wicked imagination, you got to be cast down and brought down to the obedience of Christ. You got to set your mind on thing above and not on thing of this world. If your body, hallelujah, was saved, it wouldn't, hallelujah, it wouldn't, you wouldn't get old. It wouldn't um, decay. But your body is not saved. Your flesh is not saved. Therefore, you got to crucify the flesh. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said that. I crucify the flesh. There's nothing good in my flesh. You can't please God in your flesh. You please God by walking in the spirit. Them that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Walk in the spirit will fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
So your mind is not saved and your flesh is not saved. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. We're going to find what the gospel is today. What the gospel is, and then like I said before, I'm going to give you some scripture that supports the reason why uh, I don't believe that a born-again believer can have a demon living inside of him while the Spirit of God is there. I don't believe that. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 5. This is what the gospel is. Uh, before I go down, if you're... If you're if you don't have your Bible, pause the video and go get your Bible. Uh, very important. Don't take Mr. Scott's word for it. I want you to see the word of God. I want you to see what God's word is saying. See it. Very important. First Corinthians 15, verse 2, 5. He says, More of brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you. Brother, he's talking to the saved people. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received wherein you stand. The gospel. This, he said, I, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached. That gospel has got to be preached and it's got to be lived. Hallelujah. The Bible said, Hallelujah. The, the gospel, Hallelujah. Foolish unto those, the preaching of the cross, the foolish unto those that perish. But it's that they're saved is the power of the Almighty God, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, which also you have received. We got to be willing to receive the gospel. A man that received them to give them, he gave power to become the sons of God. We got to receive the gospel. Wherein you stand. When I receive the gospel, when I repent and believe the gospel, then I'm able to stand. Hallelujah. I'm able to stand. I'm able to stand on, hallelujah, the rock. Stand on that rock, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 2. By which you are saved. You are saved why? Because you repent and believe the gospel. You, be, you repent and believe the gospel that will preach unto you. You repent and believe the gospel. Very, very important. Where also you are saved. The Bible says, Raise not given to the strong or to the strong, but he endures to the end. The same shall be saved. If you keep it in memory, which I preach unto you. No, you got to keep it in memory. So what's up a man thinking? So was he. You got to keep it in your memory. Paul said, Think on these things. They're going to think, hallelujah. They're going to think above, now think of this world. They're going to think of a good report. If you keep it in memory, what I preached unto you, unless you believe in vain. No, you got to know why you believe. Hallelujah. If not, you have, your belief can become in vain. Verse uh, 3. For I delivered unto you first of all which I received. Paul said, I delivered unto you first what I have received. In other words, those that are preaching the gospel, we got to be first partaker of this word. We got to be first partaker of it. If not, we will come like Paul said. I don't want to preach on the other myself, become a castaway. Hallelujah. I don't want to become a castaway. Why? Because God going to judge me according to what I'm, what I'm preaching. Hallelujah. The way I'm living. Many people, they are preaching one thing and living something totally different. Live it unto you first of all, that which I have received. First of all, I got to receive it. I got to receive. I got to believe the gospel. I got to apply this word to my life. How did Christ died for our sin, according to scripture. How Christ died for our sins. John the Baptist said, Behold, Lamb of God will take away the sins of the world. Our sin. Not just some, but our sin. Everybody's sin. He died for hallelujah. He died for the ungodly. He died for him. We didn't have him, have him on our mind, he died for us. He died according to the scripture, according to the scripture, according to what the word of God said. Not according to what man said, what the word of God said. For that he will bear it. He died and he will bear it. Oh, there it go. And then he rose again on the third day according to the scripture. He died. Hallelujah. He died for our sin. He will bear it. 
And then he rose, he rose again. Death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel of Jesus Christ. There it go right there. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. There's five him. We'll go to verse 5. And that he was seen of Cyprus, Cyprus, that's Peter. And then the 12. He died, uh, buried, and he rose again. There the gospel go. So we know we find a gospel there. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. So it's very important for us to know that. Because if I don't, if I don't repent and believe the gospel, I know what the gospel is. If I don't, if I, how can I believe the gospel when I don't know what the gospel is? But there are many people that I believe that they repent and they get baptized in Jesus Christ's name, permission they sin, get to the Holy Ghost, but they don't know what the gospel is. So go right back to their folly. Go right back to a dog. It's like a dog to turn back to his vomit. Because when you come out of that water, you got to know that's the death, burial, and resurrection. That old man, is like, that, that water is like a grave. You bury that old man. Just as Jesus, hallelujah, will bury. Hallelujah, bury. And you walk, and you come up and walk in the newness of life. That old stuff is passed away. Lord, all things become new. Got to know what the gospel is. You got to know that. Very vital, very important. Death, burial, and resurrection. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's go um, Matthew chapter 12. I'm going to show you now, we, since we know what the gospel is, what it's finding it. Now we're going to go to Matthew chapter 12. We're going to see the reason why I don't believe uh, that a born-again believer can be... Uh, had a Holy Ghost on the inside of them and have a demon at the same time. You see what the scripture said. Let God's word speak. Not man. Let God's word speak. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through 45. Okay. It says, when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walked through a dry place seeking rest and find none. Unclean spirit. A spirit, an unclean spirit when he gone out of a man. So let's look at this, hallelujah, as an example of somebody who is demon possessed, who got a demon in them. So when that evil spirit, unclean spirit, is gone out of him, it's been cast out of him. It said he that he, that unclean spirit, walked through a dry place seeking rest and find none. He's seeking rest, you know, somebody else he can go into. Because he just came out, he just got cast it out of that uh, that person. Then he said, I will return unto my house in which I came out. And when he come and find it empty, find it empty, swept and garnished. But then he says, I will return to my house. Now with the plate that you form a world, he come back to that house. How do you know that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Hallelujah. Our hallelujah, our body is what house hallelujah, the Holy Ghost. And people that are not saved, not born again, their temple is filled with evil and demonic spirits. But, but after those spirits have been cast out, had been had left that um, had left that man, a clean spirit left, it come back to that house. And then when he came back to it, he said, when he, the unclean spirit, had come, he find it empty, swept, and garnished. Now when the evil spirit leave that house, it's empty. And, and that and those evil spirit not there. Well, look at that again as a person they have demons in them. If demonic spirits in them, once those spirits been cast out, been got out of that person, that house that or that temple is now vacant. It now don't have hallelujah. It's swept and garnished. 45. Then he, the unclean spirit, take with himself some other spirit, wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell down. In other words, he brings several more evil spirits and he come back to that house and he come back to that house that's vacant. It's empty. And he come back and vacant and he make, how he lived there, he dwelled there. And his last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. So that, those scriptures that supports the reason why I don't believe that a born again believer can have a evil spirit 
in them while the Holy Ghost is there. Because when that spirit get cast out of that person, that person got to um, repent. They got to believe the gospel. Hallelujah. And at least Act 2, 38. And then the Holy, Holy Spirit comes and lives and dwells there on the inside of that believer. Then that demon is not there. So when they come back to that house, oh, the spirit of God there. And when that spirit of God there, they're not going to let that evil spirit calm down and live and dwell there while the spirit of God is on the inside of them. But if it's vacant, I know it's empty, it's been swept in garnish, when the evil spirit come back with itself more evil spirit, evil spirit is going to come back and live and dwell there. So it's very important that once you have been delivered, or once you got rid of evil spirit, that you repent and believe the gospel. Hallelujah. And at least act 238, and then the spirit of God come live on the inside of you. Very, very important. That once you repent and believe the gospel, hallelujah, the spirit of God comes and lives on the inside of you. And no evil spirit can't come and live and dwell there anymore. Then once you, hallelujah, once you backslide, you fall away from the Lord, hallelujah, walk, go back to your old way, go back to the old way of living, hallelujah, not letting the spirit of God live and dwell on you inside of you anymore, hallelujah, you quite quench the Holy Spirit, I don't believe the Spirit of God is still going to be there. He's not going to, he not going to hardly dwell in an unclean place. I know many people, they don't teach that. Hallelujah. They, they say that a born-again believer, hallelujah, can have the Holy Spirit and a demon in them at the same time. I just don't believe that. I don't believe that. Scripture does not support that. And I'm going to go to you. I'm going to go to another scripture. I'm going to show you I want to show you what happens after an unclean spirit has been, hallelujah, come, have came out of a man. I'm going to show you what happened. I'm going to show you in the book of Acts what happened. The way that, hallelujah, the Bible says is the way it's supposed to happen. Not with all these wicked and perverted people, hallelujah. They say it's like, supposed to be like this, they're supposed to be like that, or you can be born again, have a a demon spirit, a demon inside you at the same time. No, no, no. Let's go to Acts. Chapter, I believe it's chapter 8. Thank the Lord on today. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Acts chapter 8, verse 5 through 7. Five through seven. All right. Then Peter, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. My, 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 my. What did Paul just talk about in 1 Corinthians 15? What did, what did he preach? He preached the gospel. Death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now we see Philip him. He's preaching what? Christ. That's what's got to be the priest. Paul said, I determined I know nothing but Christ and him crucified. And Paul, hallelujah, saw, saw before he turned Paul, he was fancy to fancy, very intellect, very smart man. But he said, I determined not to know nothing but Christ and him crucified. All the other stuff that I learned is rubbish. Hallelujah. It, it's done. It's nothing. Because what? Because I know who Christ is. And we see here, Philip preached Christ. He didn't preach denomination. He didn't preach um, a, a, a feel-good gospel. He didn't feel prosperity gospel. He preached Christ. That's what we got to preach. Christ and him crucified. I must decrease that he may increase. Nothing else. The Bible says if I add to the, if I add to the, the word or take away from it, let me be a curse. It's got to be Christ. That's what's got to be preached. Hallelujah. That's what delivers people. Hallelujah. Not, not, all, the, not all the other things. That's what delivers people. The, the gospel. The good news of Jesus Christ. And that's what's got to be preached. It's got to it's gotta be it's got to be preached. It's got to be preached. Preach unto them. Verse 6 here. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spoke, hearing and seeing the miracle which he did. He preached Christ in verse 5. 
And now we see that people are giving heed with one accord. In other words, they're receiving the gospel. They give heed uh, unto the story which Philip spoke, seeing, hearing, and seeing a miracle which he did. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And they seeing the miracle which he had did. Miracle sign and wonders are far to those that believe. But we don't seek after miracles and signs. The Bible said, hallelujah, hallelujah. Wicked, perverted generation, you're seeking after a sign, seeking after a miracle. We don't seek after them. We seek after the Lord Jesus Christ. We seek his way. Hallelujah. The Bible seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you. He rewards the door that does not seek him. My God, my God. He said, and the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spoke. They gave heed to those things that were coming out of his mouth. My God, my God. Hear it and see the miracle which he did. In other words, they received the gospel. They received the good news of Jesus Christ. Watch what happens here in verse 7. For unclean spirit, or oh, we just read about them in Matthew, the unclean spirit. For unclean spirit cried out with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them. Oh, hallelujah. They he preached Christ unto them. They received the gospel. Now we see what happened. The unclean spirit cried out with a loud voice and came out of them that were possessed. They were possessed. Past tense. But because what, what Philip would preach to them, they received that gospel. And the unclean spirit, how the people that were possessed with unclean spirit, they came out of them. They couldn't stay in them. Same thing in today's time. Same thing. That's why I don't believe that a born again believer can have the spirit of God in them and demons at the same time. Philip preached Christ unto them. They gave heed unto the thing which he spoke. Hear and see the miracle which he had did. Verse 7, with an unclean spirit, cloud out with a loud voice, came out, came out of many were possessed with them. Many were possessed with the devil, had demons in them. But because that preached word, hallelujah, caused him, him preaching Christ unto them. And they're receiving the gospel. Verse 7 again, my God, hallelujah. Unclean spirit cried with a loud voice, came out of many were possessed with them. And many taken with a palsy and were lame were healed. Were lame. There's healing power in the name of Jesus Christ. Not just spiritually, but physically also. By his stripe, you're already healed. They were healed. Why? Because Peter, I mean, Philip preached Christ unto them. He didn't preach no deliverance. He preached Christ unto them. Many people that get delivered, but because they don't believe the gospel, they don't know what the gospel is, they don't know what the word of God is, they go right back to their folly, go right back to their way, right back to their vomit. Because that house is vacant. And that, hallelujah, the evil spirit brings several more demons with them. And the Bible says they, they latter state be worse than their former state. Hallelujah. So we thank the Lord today. Um, they're so powerful there. So powerful how Philip, which was an apostle, he's preached Christ unto them. Nowadays, people are preaching everything else but Christ. Christ has got to be preached. He's got to be preached. This gospel has got to be preached. Hallelujah. Repentance and remission of sin in Jesus Christ's name must be preached. Must be preached. Got to be preached. Let me give you another example. Hallelujah. We have another example. In Acts chapter uh, 8, again, same chapter, verse 26 through uh, 40. I'm going to show you what happens, hallelujah, when the gospel of Jesus Christ is being preached and it's being received. What happens? Nothing else. Nothing else being preached. I'm going to show you what happened. I want you to see what happened here in the scripture. Sorry. Acts chapter 8, verse 26 through 40. 
And the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip. The same Philip that we read about in Acts chapter 8, verse 5 through 7. Now the same Philip here in Acts chapter 8, verse 26 here. And the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south unto your way to go down Jerusalem, Gazara, which is the desert. desert. In other words, the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip and told him to go, Arise. And that's what God is telling us. Hallelujah. We got to arrive. We got to go. Go to the hedge of the highway. Compel people. Put the go in the gospel. Through the book of Acts. Hallelujah. You only see them apostles moving as the spirit was leading them and guiding them. Hallelujah. They wasn't just sitting back. Hallelujah. On their stool or do nothing. The Bible said, Jesus said, occupy until I come. When I return, when I find faith on the earth. He told him to ride, go toward the south on the way that go down from Jerusalem to Kazar, which is the desert. Verse 27. And he arose and went. No question asked here with Philip. No question asked. He arose and went. He, 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 he did what the angel of the Lord told him to do. He arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, Ethiopia, and a unit, and a great authority on the Candace Queen of Ethiopia, Ethiopia, which had charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for the worship, was returning, verse 28, was returning, and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet. So this unit here is sitting down, reading the word of God. Pay close attention, he's reading the word of God in the book of Isaiah. 29, then the spirit said to Philip, go near and join yourself in his chariot. Spirit of God telling him, the Holy Spirit said to him, Philip, go. Oh, glory to Jesus Christ. Word go here again. We saw it in 26. Now we see it in 29. Not sit, but go. Near, join yourself into this chariot. 30. And Philip came unto Hitler, Hitler, to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? Oh, what, what a way how to introduce himself to this unit. He didn't come accusing him, but he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And that's my question to you all today. When you're reading the word of God, when you're studying the word of God, do you understand what you're reading? Hallelujah. My Bible said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. Why? Not because knowledge didn't come, but when knowledge came, they rejected knowledge. Where's the principal thing but all you're getting, get understanding. We got to understand what the word of God is saying. Him, do you understand what you're reading? So powerful. 31. And he said, how can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So here we go. Hallelujah. Philip is talking to the unit. He said, how can I, except some man guide me? How can I, Understand what I'm reading, except some man guides me. Some man helps me. My God, my God. So I believe that this unit here was not born again. He was not saved. And when you're not saved, the scriptures, the Bible is vain to you. You can't understand what it's saying. The only thing a script, the scripture says to unbelievers, repent and believe the gospel. And at least Act 2 30, repent is a must. Godless sorrow leads to repentance. Worldly sorrow leads to death. Repentance is a must. And when you repent, how do believe the gospel? Those scales start to fall off your eyes. So you're able to understand what the Holy Scripture is saying. So we see now this unit. He said, How can I understand if somebody have somebody to guide me, to help me? My, 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 my. And that should be our approach. That should be our approach. And even if you're born again, believe that should be our approach. When you're studying, reading the word of God, don't try to, hallelujah, don't try to come out with your own understanding. Because there's a way that seems right unto a man. In those are ways of destruction or death. I can't be wise in my own eyes. How can a he said, and he said, how can I accept some man should guide me? And he's out there, they would come up and sit with him. 
He wanted people to come up and sit with him. Look at how the spirit is moving here in the scripture. My God, my God. Verse 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, like a lamb dumb before the shear. And he opened, he nodded his mouth. They're talking about Jesus Christ. They're prophesying about Jesus Christ there. Verse 33. He was, his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his veneration? And his life was taken from earth. 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, who speaketh thou prophet of himself or some other man? No, he asked him, Philip, this scripture that I'm reading, who are you talking about? Is the prophet talking about himself or are you talking about someone else? He didn't know. Watch Philip here now. Watch what happened to you all. 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. We just saw, hallelujah, in Acts chapter 8, verse 5, that he preached Christ. He preached Jesus Christ to these people, to those people. Now we see that same Philip preaching Jesus here to this unit. My God, my God. That should be an example to every street preacher, every, hallelujah, people that are in these building. Christ has got to be preached. Not a get rich program, not some other kind of hidden agenda. Jesus Christ has got to be preached. The power of the cross. Death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Nothing to add, nothing taken away. Oh, wow. He said, preach Jesus unto him. Preach Jesus. That's what we got to do. Verse 36. And they went on their way. They came to a certain water. And the unit saying, see, here is water. What does him mean to be baptized? My God, my God. In other words, Philip preached Jesus unto him. Preached the gospel unto this unit. There's power in preaching. The preaching of the gospel. The Bible said this gospel be here. It's here to those that are lost. Why? Because the God of this world have blind the mind, at least they may believe that glorious gospel. There's power in his gospel. 37. And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. This unit here, he got Christ, Jesus preached unto him. So he wanted to, he saw some water. He said, what enemy? What, that's some water. What enemy to be baptized? In other words, he wanted to get into get in the water then. He wanted to be baptized. But Philip stopped them. Oh, my God. Philip stopped him. And he said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. Know what? Philip made sure that he understood what the gospel was. Believe with all thine heart. Oh, my, my son, have with all thy heart. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul. Love thy neighbor as you love thyself. Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He was trying to put the cart before the horse. He wanted to go ahead and get in, get in the water. He wanted to go ahead and get baptized. But Philip said, only if you believe with all your heart, you may. And that's what we got to be before we baptize somebody in Jesus Christ's name. Make sure they understand what the gospel is. If not, they're going to be just like this unit wall. And I believe God holds us accountable when people don't, we are not fully um, make sure somebody understands what the gospel is before they get into the water, before they get baptized in Jesus Christ's name. We don't want false converts. We want true converts. People that are going to be a access to the kingdom of God, access to the body of Christ. Not be a hindrance to the body of Christ. Not be able to, we don't, we're not looking for that. We're going to be an access to the body of Christ. Some people going to help up, uphold their bloodstained banner. Going to show this dying world what it means to be a true Christian, a true follower of Christ. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ is looking for. 
You got to look for people that are going to, hallelujah, be baptized in Jesus Christ's name. I mean, repent and be baptized in Jesus Christ's name, and they go right back to their folly. Now, I believe that man, another reason why they, a reason why that happened is because people don't fully understand what the gospel is. They don't understand that. And they feel like, hey, man, I need, I need to get baptized. I, I, need, I need to go, and go in the water. But you got to understand, you got to be like this. You got to be, hallelujah. We got to make sure they understand what the gospel is, what I'm trying to say, before they get into the water. Fully, make it, they fully got to understand. If not, I believe our blood going to be on our hand. They should understand what the gospel is. Death, burial, and resurrection, the good news. Go to the scripture. Go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 5. But you don't understand what it, what it is. Hallelujah. Because if not, the blood going to be on our hand. The blood going to be on our hand. We don't want false converts. We want true converts. We want people going to be an access to the kingdom. People going to be a, a part of the body of Christ. Hallelujah. The body of Christ. Part of the body. And there's no schism in the body. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. God don't get glorified when a person returns to their folly. Hallelujah. When they go back to eat, they vomit. Now, if you have fully explained what the gospel is, and they repent and believe the gospel, and they do Act 238, and they go back to their folly, the blood is off your hand. But I believe that if a person baptize somebody in Jesus Christ, Baptize Jesus Christ's name, baptize somebody, and that person don't fully understand what the gospel is, and they go back to their father, go back to their old way, I believe God hold the person, hold the person that baptized them. I believe God hold them accountable for that. That's why we gotta do our part. We gotta do all we gotta do our part. If not, I believe God holds us accountable for those things. Philip here, he didn't let that unit, he could have just put that unit. Tell you, you repent and be baptized. I'm baptized in Jesus Christ's name. That ain't what that ain't what Philip done. Philip preached Christ unto him. Preached Jesus Christ unto him. If Philip unit saw water, he wanted to get baptized. But Philip stopped them and said, "If you believe with all your heart, you may." You may say, "What well, do believe?" The Bible said the devil believe and tremble. We got to have a deeper belief than the devil does. Belief, the, belief, hallelujah, the man's action. Jesus said, hallelujah, if you love me, you'll keep my commandment. Belief is action. I can tell, if I'm, if I'm married, I can tell my wife all day I love her. I care about you. I love you. But if I ain't demonstrating that, then that look, that, that what come out of my mouth is in vain. It don't mean nothing. Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. He also said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he said, I believe. is what he said now. I believe. And watch what this belief leads to. Hallelujah. It's what it leads to. Because you got many people that reject what we, we're about to read here in verse 38 through 40. Many people, they reject this part. They say, oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. But then they reject these next couple of verses here. We're about, we about to, uh, hallelujah, read here. They reject this. What about to happen? We got to read what happened. After this unit says, I do believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down, both of them, into the water, both Philip and a eunuch. And he baptized him. Philip baptized him. So we see what the belief led to. Repent, believe the gospel, at least Act 238. He got baptized. Many people say, oh, I believe they're rejecting baptism. They rejecting the word of God. Why would a born again 
Why would somebody who said they believe, a born again believe, why would they reject baptism? When Jesus Christ was baptized, why would they kick again to pray? Why they come? Why would they come against the word of God? I don't understand that. How, how would you? Why would you do that? And when they were right now, when they were come out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, and the unit saw him no more, and he went his way rejoicing. My my my, the unit was rejoicing. He went from reading the scripture, not understanding what he's reading. Philip preached Christ to him. We have a clear understanding what the gospel was. Then the unit wanted to get baptized. Saw the water there. Probably got excited. Oh, I want to get baptized. Philip stopped him. He said, only if you believe. Only if you believe with all thine heart. Then you may. But a lot of people, they are, they are half-hearted people. They don't believe the gospel fully. God, we not, we can't pick and choose what part of the gospel we want to believe, what part of God's word we want to believe. God told Ezekiel to eat the whole scroll. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, by every word. Not some have every word but see out of the mouth of God. There are many people, when they see this scripture, this scripture we just read, and again, it literally says water. They think it's talking about a spiritual water. Let's talk about a little water here. Don't take the scripture out of context. It means what it says and says what it means. Let God be true. Let every man be a liar. I can't add and take away from God's word. Why would you want to kick against that? Can't get what the Holy Scripture said. Don't, that's what the Pharisee, Sadducee did with Jesus. Don't kick against the prick. God's word is concrete. It means what it says. It says what it means. So when Jesus Christ is preached and that gospel is received, like I said, at least in Acts 2, 38, no that spirit of God come and live on the inside of that believer. It dwelled there and li lived on the inside of them. All this wickedness, all unclean spirit cannot li live there and stay there. And just because you're influenced, because you have some thoughts that's not godly, doesn't mean that you're possessed by a devil. Many people, they are teaching that you can be a born again believer with the spirit of God living on the inside of you and have a demon in there at the same time. I hope y'all got a clear understanding of what the word of God says concerning that subject or that matter. Very important. Went through the scripture here with Philip. Preach Christ unto these people. They gave one a call with me. They took heed of what he was saying. Hearing and seeing a miracle, which he had did. And that led to the unclean spirits coming, coming out of them. People that was possessed by devils. But when Christ was received, when that gospel was received, the good news of Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, hallelujah. Now, at least Acts 2, 38, those evil spirits cannot live there, cannot dwell there. Can't have light and darkness in the same vessel, in the same place, at the same time. It's not going to happen. It's like in the natural. When it's dark in your house, when you cut the light on, the darkness go away. Same way, spiritual. When you're a born-again believer, when you got the Spirit of God in you, you cannot have a demonic uh, possession. You got to not be possessed by a demon. I hope y'all got something out of this teaching today. God bless your hearts. Uh, so thankful what the Lord is doing in the last number days. And I pray that you all stay in love with Jesus Christ like never before.
He's coming back. There's so many, hallelujah, signs that he's on his way back. And he's coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or any such blemish. We got to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Very vital. Got to walk in the fear of the Lord, not fear of man, fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord, we get the fear of the Lord, we begin a wisdom. If any man lack wisdom, let him master God. There are many people that want wisdom, but they don't fear God. Let's hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Let's hear the whole conclusion of the matter. The whole duty of a man, fear of God, keep his commandment. Fear of God, keep his commandment. Not man's commandment, but keep his commandment. And God, Jesus Christ gave us two commandments. Love the Lord with all thy heart, mind, body, and soul. Second one, like it unto this, love thy neighbor as love thyself. Hallelujah. And all of thee rest the law and the prophet on those two. I thank the Lord today for you all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Um, thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave a comment. Any questions you may have, God is so good. And I love him. Appreciate him so much, what he's doing uh, in, in your all's life, in my life, through Jesus Lord Street Ministries, people that are part of it live. He's a worthy to be prayed, worthy to be glorified. Stay in love with him. Until we meet again, God bless you. Bye-bye.